Welcome to Marin Voices and Views. With Larry Strick, I'm Peter B. Collins. We've gotten great response to this new program about news and politics in Marin, and we thank you. And you can watch our show online at our website anytime at marinvoicesandviews.com. Our thanks to the staff and volunteers here at the Community Media Center, which is a great new facility here in San Rafael. Today we have two distinct voices and views on the new Marin Energy Authority. Now I've covered climate change issues for many years and I do support MEA. And in full disclosure, I moderated a series of town hall meetings about this new entity in 2008 and I was paid about $1,000 for my services. Our first guest today is Charles McGlashan, the District 3 County Supervisor, now in his second term, and he's the chair of the Marin Energy Authority. He served on the board of the Marin Municipal Water District, was vice chair of the Marin Economic Commission. He graduated from Yale and has an MBA in public management from Stanford. Larry? Supervisor McClashen, thank you for joining us. The Marin Energy Authority at this point is a reality. And it's running, you have an interim director, the county of Marin is involved, seven cities, San Rafael, Sausalito, Mill Valley, Tiburon, Belvedere, San Anselmo, and Fairfax all joined up. What's going to happen next? We're in the process right now of subscribing our first round of customers. The phase one larger customers of Marin, residential, business, and municipal, are all being offered the chance to stay with the authority's program called Marin Clean Energy. In about 12 months, we'll enroll everybody else, all of the smaller consumers like me, will get the chance to join our program at that time. We're also working on a number of energy efficiency initiatives, and we hope to launch a solar financing district in the next few months. And Charles, the opponents, largely uh, driven by the Pacific Gas and Electric Company, talk a lot about the risks. In your view, what are the risks to Marin taxpayers of this new community choice aggregation joint powers authority entity? It's important to distinguish between a taxpayer and a ratepayer. The ratepayers basically enjoy and suffer the risks of having a new competitor enter the marketplace on their behalf. So for the first time ever for the Marin County ratepayer who pays for electricity, there's a new buyer in town, the Marin Energy Authority working on their behalf. Right now we know that that ratepayer will enjoy exactly the same cost on their electric bill for about double the amount of renewable power. Certain customers like me have already signed up to step up to Deep Green, which is 100% renewable electricity for about a 6% premium. That cost structure will be available in about a year. Um, the taxpayer, however, the general public, the general taxpayer of the county, really is completely insulated from this effort, with one exception. The Marin County government has paid for consulting efforts and legal analysis of this venture and have lent the Marin Energy Authority $540,000. If pg and &E is successful in destroying the Marin Clean Energy Program, that money would be lost. Yep. In addition, we just agreed to co-sign a $950,000 bank loan that the Marin Energy Authority was able to get in the private sector. But by virtue of that co-sign, it's theoretically possible if pg and &E can destroy us that the energy authority would default. But, but you're in the county's in second place. Uh, a group of citizens stepped up and uh, they are in first place in terms of that financial liability to the tune of about three quarters of a million dollars. That's right. Three incredibly generous and brave citizens who believe in this opportunity provided direct loans to the Marin Energy Authority so we could start the Marin Clean Energy Program last month. They go first then the bank loan will come in after them with the cosign from the county. Now the grand jury here in Marin has looked at this issue and they've issued a report and they've found 14 points to criticize this process. One of the points that they uh, were critical of is the fact that they don't believe that there's been transpo transparency in voter approval. I've kind of been looking at this the last couple of weeks. 
It's been going on since uh, 2002. It seems to me there have been a number of elections uh, about this and people who have been representing us to make these decisions. What do you say to the grand, grand jury when they suggest that there hasn't been voter approval of this? It's a conservative argument to throw something to a ballot as a way to conflate so-called taxpayer rights with a good opportunity to destroy such an effort. In contrast, the Marin Clean Energy concept has been vetted in over 50 public hearings around the county over the last two years and numerous public workshops above and beyond that. The notion of a representative democracy assumes that there's value given to the citizen by having their elected representatives deal with complex issue like this energy opportunity. And so by delegating our elected powers to representatives who work on our behalf, we're asking them to make very complicated and um, intelligent decisions on our behalf. So it comes down to a philosophical war. Should every single decision about government be sent to the people for individual votes on every topic, or do you delegate some things to your legislature or the county board or your city council? In California today, one in four ratepayers get their electricity from their local city council. And in those jurisdictions, the people are enjoying 20% lower rates, more renewable power, and effective delivery of electricity. So the general argument that the grand jury made that it isn't appropriate to make such a decision in a city council chamber misses the mark. Charles, you referenced the uh, many meetings, public meetings that took place to explain this and to give people a, an understanding of it. Town councils and the Board of Supervisors who have decided to participate reviewed this very thoroughly. I've, I've seen the PowerPoint presentation many times myself. And one of the things that I noticed was over the course of this in 2008, PG&E moved from kind of a neutral position to opposition. And they hired uh, former supervisor Gary Giacomini and former assemblyman Joe Nation, who will be with us later in the program. Uh, and they have been leading and, and counseling, I guess, opposition to this. One of the issues the grand jury talked about that your colleague, Hal Brown, on the board took great exception to was that uh, you know there's been no effort to work with PG&E to bring renewable resource based power to Marin County. H what's your take on that? It was wildly incorrect. I myself made strong overtures directly to the CEO's office of PG&E and his senior advisor on government affairs asking them to be our broker. Work with us. If you guys want to sell us 25% renewable power at the same cost we enjoy today, and you can give us a deep green product for 100% renewable, we would rather buy it from you than from anyone else. Turns out they couldn't deliver anything of value to us. Supervisor Brown, I, our county administrative officer, a number of us met repeatedly with PG&E trying to find out if they could deliver anything innovative that would allow us to stand down from this enormous amount of work. You know, it seems uh, that PG&E has a long history of fighting opposition. I noticed that Dan Walters, a Sacramento Bee columnist, is reporting that in Sacramento, uh, back in 1923, when the Sacramento Utility District wanted to get online to give energy, PG&E fought them for 23 years prior to them uh, formulating their, their utility district. Uh, it seems to me that the same thing is going on here and they're looking to pull the plug on something before it even gets off the ground. Have you had any thoughts on that? Oh, indeed. They're threatening everybody with lawsuits. They threatened the water district with a lawsuit if they were willing to co-sign our loan. They threatened my colleagues and me with lawsuits for co-signing a loan. They're threatening the Marin Energy Authority with lawsuits over ridiculous claims on environmental rules. It goes on and on. They were refusing for months to sign our service agreement which is mandated by law. Finally, the Public Utilities Commission forced them to sign it as required by law. So they're very open about their ability to flaunt the rules. They tied Sacramento up, as you said, for 23 years in vicious and expensive litigation, and we accept 
expect the same thing to happen here, unfortunately. And Charles, PG's and uh, PG E's opposition seems to lack credibility. And just briefly, uh, they bungled the construction of Diablo Canyon, and those cost overruns finally were jammed on the ratepayers when they went into bankruptcy after the deregulation that they wrote. And it just strikes me that a formerly bankrupt company that is trying to tell you and the people of Marin County that this is too risky, well, it, it just doesn't have credibility. This entire campaign, both for Prop 16 and even more locally, our own effort to get our venture off the ground, is going to hinge on their ability to use the grand jury, use former elected officials and others to bamboozle and mislead the voter. It's tragic in its proportions where you watch marketing materials and formerly legitimate speakers about public policy used to, frankly, purposefully mislead everybody about what's really going on. Watch out for Diablo Canyon. There's another enormous round of costs headed our way for retooling. They use single pass cooling down there, which destroys thousands of fish every day. They suck in ocean water, run it through once, and put it out in the ocean significantly warmer. The Marine Energy Authority, by contrast, has passed policy that we won't use nuclear power in our mix. So the people of Marin, to the extent that they don't opt out, thanks to misinformation, will avoid one of the most heinous forms of power locally. Yeah, I noticed that in the paper the other day that PG&E is going to spend between 25 and 35 million dollars on its campaign in, in, uh, to support Proposition 16. And they had to tell their shareholders that they're going to reduce their dividends because of this expenditure. I also heard that the opposition to this campaign, the no on 16, has $23,000. It just doesn't sound like a fair fight to me. What are we going to do about this? It's not a fair fight at all. First of all, the Attorney General had to force them to rename the ballot measure, calling it what it is, a new two-thirds voting requirement for all municipal and community choice aggregations. These guys aren't fighting fair. I'm banking my hope that the people of Marin and California are smarter than that. They will see through this Monopoly Protection Act and do the right thing. In that same section of the Chronicle that reported this uh, plan by PG&E to spend all that money, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, Ron George, made comments not directly about Prop 16, but just how the initiative process is being used, not it was, as it was intended to empower the people, but by corporations to push through things that the legislature would never pass. The initiative process in California has indeed been completely perverted to serve the wealthy and large corporations at the expense of the people and good public policy. The legislature has been completely discredited, so we no longer trust them to do our delegated government work. And the combination of those two things together has basically brought California to the brink of ruin. Supervisor Charles McGlashan, the chair of the Marin Energy Authority, thank you very much for being here today. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to welcome Joe Dacian to our show. Joe is currently a professor of climate change and healthcare policy at Stanford University. Prior to that, he was representing the people of Marin and Sonoma in the assembly for six years. Uh, and right now, he's a spokesman for the Coalition of, for Reliable and Affordable Energy, a coalition that includes Pacific Gas and Electric Company. Welcome, Joe. Thank you, great to be here. Joe, what is this coalition who are the members of it, uh, and what yeah. percentage of the revenue is PG&E uh, providing for its activities? It is, if not exclusively funded by PG, it's you know ninety something percent at this point, which is, um, you know, it, it may end up being in that neighborhood, but certainly PG&E has provided the funding up front. Um, we're expecting other folks to help out along the way. Uh, we have about. Oh, several thousand people in Marin County who have now affirmatively said, I want to be part of this because I'm really concerned about this energy authority. Um, and what, what the reason we were formed was because we want to make sure that people understand what is about to happen with the Marin Energy Authority. We think it's risky. We don't think it provides environmental benefits. Um, and we don't, I mean, we think that, uh, as the grand jury said and the county treasurer said, they should pull the plug. 
Now, it's hard for me to connect you to this, Joe, because yeah. uh, I've known you for quite a while. Mm -hmm. I consider you a pretty green guy. And while certainly Marin County can only, you know, produce support for a certain level of renewable energy, if these community aggregation systems were in place across the state, it would be a net benefit to the utilities, including PG&E, in meeting their targets for getting away from carbon-based uh, energy sources mm -hmm. and moving into a renewable uh, area or, or era. That maybe and maybe not. <laughs> that requires a huge leap of faith. And the, the leap of faith is you have to assume that a CCA like the one in Marin will actually reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. In fact, the work that I did, and I, I'm pretty good at calculating greenhouse gas emissions now, the work that I did initially showed that because of this contract with Shell, that's who they've decided to buy power from in Marin, um, you actually would end up with an increase in greenhouse gas emissions. That was the initial calculation, and it was because MEA said, we're gonna buy 25% renewable. Well, PG&E is already 51% greenhouse gas free. I mean, that's the target. That's but what that's it, including nuclear, right? It, it includes nuclear, includes large hydro. Mm -hmm. But the, ga the name of the game here is not about whether it's renewable or not renewable, it's about whether it's greenhouse gas free. You know, we need to find some way to reduce greenhouse gases, and pg e is, does a great job. I mean, that's why they were named the greenest utility in the country by Newsweek a few months ago. So if, if, you, if you assume, if you look at those numbers, the initial numbers, then you say, well, MEA actually increases emissions, and my own calculation showed that they would increase emissions on the order of about the equivalent of 20,000 cars per year on the road in Marin. Mm -hmm. So then MEA finally did something right. They did something right. They said, we're going to put in a clause that says that Shell has to provide to us at least 53% greenhouse gas free electricity. pg and is 51, they're 53, so in theory they should meet that. What, what the problem with that is that there's a clause in the contract with Shell that says MEA has to pay for that. I don't think there's a way to meet the price target and still, and still meet that greenhouse gas target. So, so essentially you have prices that are the same as PG&E's, greenhouse gas emissions that are the same as PG&E's, and you have to hope that somehow MEA will grow faster than PG&E. I don't think that's realistic. Well, it confuses me because I don't sure. think, and I'm not here to relitigate whether or not it should have been created or not, yeah. because it goes back to 2002, the legislator yeah. passed, legislature passed it. Right. The I didn't vote for it. Well, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, and uh, AB 117, I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about a different uh, bill. No, yes. no, AB 117, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I actually noticed you did right. vote for, 64 right. assembly right. people voted for right. it, bipartisan. Right. And when you voted for it, I, I need to ask you, what did you anticipate was going to come about this? I, I thought there would be, I, I am fine in the position that pg e would take is that they're fine with community choice aggregation districts if they're real, if they're credible, if they're financially sound but this one's not even close to it. If you, look, if you look at this, look at the business plan they've put together. The business plan changes constantly, periodically. The, the mix of power they're gonna buy changes periodically. I mean, he, here's one of the great ironies, it's called Marin Clean Energy. The Solar Industries Association has said they need to get a new name because there's nothing clean about it. Well, and, there's, and, there's, and there is nothing clean about Marin Clean Energy. Because if you look at that plan with Shell, again, for five years, what they do is they buy essentially the same mix as PG&E buys, and that's it. But th that's, that's, that's it. That's the, one of the issues. I mean, you, I've seen some of the pieces that you've put out, and you, you know, trust the politicians, trust the experts. There's a, mm -hmm. there's a war going on around here. Mm -hmm. And it, as I look at this, uh, what I hear going on is that you uh, at PG&E and your coalition want to pull the plug on this thing uh, before you even see if it works or not. Well, why is that? If, if, if there were no risk involved, if there were significant environmental benefits, then I think it would be much harder to oppose this. I mean, I sent an email to someone this morning and I said, look, if, if MEA did the following, if they simply said, climate change is a serious threat to our very existence, we have to do so much more than we're doing right now. And in order to be better in Marin, we're actually going to go out and buy renewables. We're going to do things that are going to cost 
frankly, a significant amount of money. And we want you to chip in because it's your responsibility, it's our responsibility. If they did that, that would be one thing. But what they've said is essentially, we'll give you the same as PG&E's, you know, we'll give you the same and it's going to cost you the same. And somewhere down the road, we'll figure out some way to make this better. It's just not a credible plan. But you use these talking points, Joe, like risky. <clears throat> and it seems to me that the biggest risk to the Marin Energy Authority is that PG&E is going to spend millions of dollars to kill it. And you talked about some of the vol volatility and the change in the business plan. Sure. Well, they had to adapt because of the, uh, the Wall Street meltdown yeah. and some of the financing that was previously available dried up. So yes, they have the, adapted, but that doesn't mean that they're changing it every week like the, you change your sheets. The financing, how are they going to find financing? I mean, they need two, two sources to get, to get loans. They really need a couple of sources of collateral. I mean, they, th so far they've essentially said, we're not going to put up any collateral. Well, no one's going to loan you anything. No one's going to loan you the, the, the amount now they use is $375 million. No one's going to loan you that three seventy-five million unless you have two things. Well, number one, a revenue stream from a, a solid base of customers, which they you know, have a little bit of a base early on. And number two, if the revenue stream goes south, doesn't work out, we, they'll want something else, which we think will be the county's general fund and the city's general funds. I mean, we, you know, before we started airing this, we were talking about the economic condition of California. And look, just look at the county of Marin. We're $20 million in the hole this year. We're $50 million in the hole this next year. And so is this the time to be taking this sort of a, of a risk on something that really doesn't look like it's going to pan out. But, but Joe, PG&E has little credibility about risk. They wrote the deregulation bill that turned off our lights and took them into bankruptcy. Well, I and don't now, think as a monopoly, <laughs> they've got this high-voltage, big-money plan to sn yeah. you know, snuff out any competition that could develop. And also, they have used their power in Sacramento yeah. to limit the amount that people can put back on the grid from their own yeah. solar arrays. I, 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 there's, there's a lot in there. Let me, let me d address the issue of deregulation. Deregulation was passed in, that's what I thought you were talking about a minute right. ago, passed in 1996. I wasn't there. Steve right. Peace wrote the bill. Steve Peace wrote the bill. Mm -hmm. and, well, PG&E and, wrote the bill. Well, and, and um, I think Steve Peace would be insulted by that. But, you know, the, the, bill, the bill did one thing that made it very tough for anybody in, in investor-owned utility business to, to, to make ends meet, and that's they greatly restricted the ability to buy long-term. That meant you had to buy on the spot market, so who, so then Ken Lay and Enron came in, took advantage mm -hmm. of it. That was not the doing of an IOU, a, a PG&E, or a Southern California Edison. That was just dumb on, the, on behalf of the legislature to, to do that. Um, and so, um, you know, but it, but it does point, I think, to the inherent volatility in this market. It's a tough market. There was a guy in Sausalito who um, stood up in front of the city council and I had I'd made a comment about the, you know, the energy business being very tough to deal with and very unpredictable and volatile and so forth. And the mayor said, look, this isn't rocket science. The guy follows me and he says, he said, I actually disagreed with Joe. He says, it is, or disagree with you, Mr. Mayor, it's not rocket science, it's worse than rocket science. Now he was exaggerating, obviously, but the fact is that, that there's going to be a lot of money on the table um, and it's going to be managed by people who don't have uh, the experience and the expertise to do it. And again, I'll go back to this issue of if, if there was some, you know, if there was something at the end of the rainbow, some pot of gold, some great benefit on the environmental side, I understand that. But there isn't anything. You know, you get the same as you have today. What, 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 what bothers me about this whole thing, yeah. quite honestly, is that this has been vetted. It's been passed by the legislature. It's been passed by the county supervisor. This plan wasn't. This plan was no, not passed by the but, legislature. But they, the, the underlying the under, authorization, concept the concept was. Sure. And the, concept but but was, the local sure. governments, yeah. the, the county, the seven cities, right. have entrusted their leaders right. to pass this bill. They're willing to take that risk. Mm -hmm. PG&E is usurping, in my mind, yeah. that democratic process by putting yeah. a ballot initiative on. I could yeah. not help be, be, yeah. be struck by what something Chief Justice George said in the paper the other day. Yeah. He was talking at Stanford, your college, yeah. your university, saying that, the, look, this initiative process is out of control. It started in 1911 to 
protect the people from the utilities in the railroads. Mm -hmm. Now the special interests are dumping a ton of money into it, mm -hmm. and it's, it's hurting California. It's a stranglehold on California. And in fact, this initiative makes it 66% of the people have to vote. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. a simple majority. Right. That's one article. In the same paper, Joe, right. I see that PG&E plans to spend 20 to $35 million on this mm -hmm. to push their initiative. And I'm wondering what you would imagine Justice George thinks about this. Well, I know what he thinks about the initiative process in general, and I think I would agree with him. I think it's out of—I mean, I think it is out of control. I think we do have too many, you know, too many interests who are engaging, but they do—they do because I think they find that they can't accomplish much via the legislature. But the, you, the legislature. I think. Okay, well, let me ask: Do you support yeah. Proposition 16? and these misleading expensive mailers that we're being bombarded with in Marin County. These, the, the, mail, the mailers, these mailers re, that, that, that you're referring to are right here. These, are, these refer to the Marin Energy Authority and, mm -hmm. and the risk that's inherent in that plan. Um, and I don't think there's anything misleading at all about these. I mean, what, you know, they, they quote the IJ, they quote the treasurer, they quote the grand jury. Uh, they quote the 11, now 11 former mayors, 11 out of Including 13. Including Ann Solom, who is co-owner of a firm that's worked for PG&E for 30 years. Okay, take Ann Solom out of it. So now, <laughs> so now we have nine out of 11, or nine out of, uh, eight out of 11 former mayors who think this is a bad idea. It's still a bad idea. I mean, if you, even if you take that out of there, talk to the other the mayors there. Talk to other folks out there. And talk do, to folks who've been... In the time we have left, yeah. do you support Prop 16? I, I think it's important for people to be able to have a vote on this. A two-thirds supermajority passed think, by a majority? I, I think that when you, when you get down to it, if you're asking, in the case of Marin, remember in Marin, they're asking for what is the equivalent of a $5,000 tax on every single household and I think people that's what it works out to if you do the math five thousand dollars per household I think it's important that people have the right to vote on that we're gonna have to Period. leave it there Joe Nation thank you for joining us thank for you. a lively conversation Thanks. thank you thank you Peter it's time for my favorite part of the show when we pick one of 327 electeds to visit us. Okay who will get the invitation next? It's not American Idol, it's not Dancing with the Stars. Regina Carey, Democratic Central Committee, 5th District, you'll be invited on the next episode of Marin Voices and Views. Thanks for watching, visit our website and send us a comment on the web. Can't wait to meet her. <laughs>